Well, welcome to worship this Sunday, October uh, 17th. And let me begin by reminding you that today, in case you're tuning in early, uh, we have 9.30 worship here in the sanctuary. Um, and then this day, we have the, uh, we will not have the 10.30 service here. We will have an 11 o'clock service at Saluda Shoals Park in Irmo, uh, 11 o'clock worship service with a 12 o'clock picnic to follow. And you're welcome to either or both, uh, hopefully both. But if even if you can't make the 11 o'clock worship, come to the picnic. And then there's lots of youth and children activities to follow. It's gonna be um, just a, a wonderful time. Uh, do some news, and that is, I know many of you really love our recorded worship service. And I think um, the people who do that really do a great job. But for a few weeks, or for a little time, we're not sure how long, Due to technical difficulties beyond anyone's control, we're not going to have our usual recorded services. So I'm just going to offer a short uh, message today. Maybe um, a lack of the recorded service might make in you a hunger to be here in person at 9.30 or 10.30 to hear the word here. The 10.30 service has singing and hymns and choir. And both services, of course, have the meal, the bread and the wine, which, of course, I think is is so in, important so i do however want to uh, at least share with everyone the gospel for the day and a few words about it so let us begin with the, the prayer of the day let us pray sovereign god you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples of the earth shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through jesus christ our savior our lord the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be your first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life, life as a ransom for many. The gospel of the Lord. I've been thinking about this passage and just a few thoughts. And, and what is it? One thought was, what's so bad with being great? I mean, we all want to be great at something. Uh, maybe you want to be a, I want to be a great preacher, a great father, a great mother, a great runner, a great biker. We want to be a great sister or brother, a great employee. We want to be a great artist in some medium or name. There's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be great at something. Thing. Maybe the issue is when someone wants to be great to lord it over someone, as Jesus says in the, in the gospel. To say, look how great I am and how small you are, or how, or I am so great you need to, to somehow serve me, to be a tyrant, as Jesus says, in some way or another. Maybe James and John asked to sit on Jesus' right and left hand, um, not as such a Lord over the disciples. Maybe it's not such a bad request. Maybe they simply want to be close to Jesus and, and be near, but the other disciples are jealous. The other disciples could just say, yes, Jesus, let them sit at your right hand or left hand. We give it to them. We want them to have it. We choose to not be jealous. We choose to be servants too. So let's not forget Jesus is addressing all of the disciples, all 12 and all of us. James and John ask something bold, yes, but the other 12 display hurtful jealousy that destroys the community. They're not one as Christ desires them to be one. We are called to be one. And we are called to be one in service, one in God's word to God. We are called to be one great, 
great in our service. Not to brag or to hold anything over one another, but to simply serve as God calls us to. For God's sake and no others. And it's not always easy, of course. Jesus alludes to that. Are you able to be baptized with the baptism I have to drink the cup that I drink? This service might not be appreciated. It might be hard. So this week, just why not look for ways you could be of service to one another? And maybe this person whom you serve doesn't even know it is you. How can you do this not for any glory, not to lord it over anyone, not for recognition or praise, but simply because it's what God calls us to do. And most importantly, it's what God does for us and has done. God has served all of humanity. God serves and has poured himself out for all the world, for forgiveness and grace and mercy. God is willing to become the least. And in that way, God's love is indeed the greatest. So let us serve as God has called us to serve. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.